Tonight and every night to watch HBO Encore in the Disney Channel. Fall's definitely here, and you'll fall for the romantic lineup this November. Like Frankie and Johnny, the butcher's wife. Even some mice fall in love. It's our privilege to take off the November chill with romance and the dance of love. And may I say I'm grateful for the privilege? Watch HBO Encore and the Disney Channel on your romance-loving TCI. This is CNN. The greatest mistake any adversary could make would be to doubt America's resolve during this period of transition. President-elect Clinton calls for continuity in global affairs. How is the international community reacting to the election results? And President Bush greets cheering supporters at the White House. He wants to go out in style. What to expect in the final weeks of his administration? This is The World Today with Natalie Allen at the CNN Center in Atlanta and Frank Sesno in Washington. And thanks for joining us this evening. We begin with day one of a new political era in the United States, a new agenda as new people prepare to take over the White House. Seeking to pave the way for a smooth transition of power, both President Bush and President-elect Clinton continued the gracious tone that marked election night. Clinton moved quickly to assure stability at home and abroad saying he wants continuity in U.S. international policy as he works on a plan to restore domestic economic strength. I also look forward to getting to work on the hard and vital task of restoring our nation's economic strength. Today I say to our financial and business leaders that although change is on the horizon, we understand the need to pursue stability even as we pursue new growth. The changes I seek will strengthen America's market systems not weaken them. And to the people of our great nation, for whom we pledge to get up every morning and work hard to bring the economic opportunity that was at the core of the Clinton-Gore campaign, I say that the task has already begun. It will not be easy, but we will spare no effort to restore growth, jobs, and incomes to the American people. President Bush, meanwhile, returned from Houston to a rousing welcome back at the White House. The president joked with supporters, asking them if they'd read the election returns. President Bush also said he'd work with Governor Clinton and promised to finish his term with style. I am very grateful to all of you. It's been a wonderful four years, and nobody can take that away from any of us. It's been good and strong, and I think we've really contributed something to the country, and maybe history will record it that way. Thank you all very, very much. On his way back aboard Air Force One, President Bush vetoed a $27 billion tax bill. It included provisions for urban enterprise zones he supports, but Mr. Bush said he rejected it because it would increase taxes. Bill Clinton says he is happy, exhausted, and thinking about all the work he has to do. And he'll be trying to get much of that work done in the first 100 days of his presidency. CNN's Candy Crowley reports. A new face with new people and new ideas. It will take about a hundred days for the novelty to wear off. Within that window, the new president will have the clearest shot at setting the agenda. And a hefty little agenda it is. To restore growth to our country and opportunity to our people. To empower our own people so that they can take more responsibility for their own lives. To face problems too long ignored, from AIDS to the environment, to the conversion of our economy from a defense to a domestic economic giant. Clinton could not and cannot do it by himself. In America, the president is just that. He's not the king. He doesn't write laws by himself. Clinton's top priorities, where and how to cut government spending, who and how much to tax, and how and where to reform the health care system, have stumped some of Washington's finest for years. Historians suggest that Clinton looked to Franklin Roosevelt for some tips. He was a magnificent broker. He was able to be very creative about legislation and able to draw all these contending interests into a symphony. We did not know at the time that Roosevelt was elected in 1932 that the result would be a new deal. With a Democratic president and a Democratic Congress for the first time in 12 years, Clinton aides look forward to smoother sailing. What do you see in the first hundred days? I don't know days? if I expect a rush of legislation, but I expect the, the, the new president, the new Congress, to break the gridlock, to push forward an aggressive economic uh, program that 
focuses on jobs and education and health care and to get something done. That's the theory anyway, but first a warning shot from the bunkers of the loyal opposition. Keep in mind that 57% uh, of the voters have voted for somebody else, so it, there was no mandate, no coattails, no majority. But they have a majority in Congress, and we'll work with uh, Senator Mitchell and Speaker Foley where we can. But we have our own agenda, too, and that's to have uh, lower taxes and less spending in America. For Bill Clinton, the first hundred days of his four years may be the longest. He is sailing high now, and Clinton, like all presidents, will have his honeymoon, all the while remembering that Washington can turn on a dime, that the electorate can be unforgiving. He need only ask George Bush. Candy Crowley, CNN, Little Rock, Arkansas. Bill Clinton will encounter a revamped Congress when he takes over in January. Many of the old faces will be there, but there will be plenty of new ones, too. CNN's Bob Franken has more on that. There will be more women, in part thanks to Anita Hill. More minorities, thanks to redistricting. And it's not altogether settled just who will be in the 103rd Congress. If anything, we will probably increase the margin slightly. He's the apparent winner in New York, but the race is so close, Republican Senator Alphonse D'Amato's opponent, Robert Abrams, refuses to concede while the final paper ballots are still being counted. In the Georgia Senate race, the leading vote-getter, incumbent Democrat Weish Fowler, didn't get the 50% majority required, so there will be a runoff. However the loose ends wrap up, we do know the 103rd will be less different than many thought it would be. True, there will be 100-plus new members, but most of the incumbents who tried to stay succeeded. What will be much different about the Democratic Congress is the Democratic White House. Gridlock will be broken! Which will mean the Republicans have an unaccustomed role. It's going to be kind of fun for a change running against the White House. The Democrats have had a lot of fun the last couple of years bashing President Bush. And I don't say we're going to do that. We're going to try to be a little more accommodating to Governor Clinton. But uh, we'll have our day. And uh, we're looking forward to 1994. Which points up one essential truth. Whatever else it is, the new Congress will immediately be part of the next political campaign. Bob Franken, CNN, Capitol Hill. The latest in that close race in New York between Alphonse D'Amato and Robert Abrams, a state judge has impounded the ballots in that race. More than 130,000 paper and absentee ballots will be counted next week. The Democrats break a 12-year string of disappointment. Now what? Later on The World Today, a humorist, a columnist, and the man from MTV tell us what to expect from a Clinton administration from their point of view. Also, we'll see how the world is reacting to the decision by America's voters. Stay with us. Welcome to Hotel Views, Business Club, Holiday Inn or Amada, Bob? Susan, you boardroom bow wow. Holiday Inn has a business club. It's got bonus points, your gifts, everything. Wake up, Susan. Smell a coffee. I smell something, Bob, and it's not French roast. Look, Ramada's business card program has all that and more. At Ramada, you can earn bonus points faster toward over 10,000 gifts. Plus, your spouse stays free. Tell us, Bob, when did your brain check out? Face it, Ramada's in. Holiday's out. Every time you reach for a cereal, you have to make a choice. Well, what if next time you had to choose between these cereals based solely on the side panels? No brand names. No fancy packages, just the plain and simple facts. You find only one is low in sugar, and a good source of fiber, and made from whole grain oats. Cheerios. Compare the side panels and see for yourself. Choose smart. Choose Cheerios. This is the new Nissan Altima. It can outslalom an Acura Legend L sedan. Wow. It has more freeway merging power than a Mercedes 190E 2.3. Wow. At 55 miles an hour, its cabin is quieter than a BMW 325i's. Wow. And it starts at $13,000. Wow. The new Nissan Altima. It's time to expect more from a car. <laughs> wow. A kiss to fill a dream on My imagination Will drive me from a kiss Sweetheart, 
I ask no more than this. Kiss the bill, the dream of. Your ship is in. Crown Cruise Line. Many world leaders have boarded the Clinton Gorg bandwagon, showering telegrams of congratulations on the president elect and speaking publicly of looking forward to the future with Clinton in the White House. CNN's Rick Salinger reports. In Great Britain, the newspapers treated the elections with the prominence they give to their own. Prime Minister John Major offered his congratulations. I have no doubt from what I know of the governor's policies that. Uh, the United States and Britain will continue to work together very closely in foreign policy and that the special relationship we've had for so many years will be maintained. But the degree of U.S. protection for Europe may not be maintained. Bill Clinton has promised to significantly reduce the number of U.S. troops here. However, German Chancellor Helmut Kohl said it is important to stand shoulder to shoulder with the U.S. in these post-Cold War times. Throughout Europe, the markets reacted calmly, though there is concern about Clinton's ability to restart the GATT train talks and fear that the U.S. might become more protectionist. In France, there is economic anticipation. Very soon it would be a bright, I mean, to, to, to have consideration for all the problems of the world because... Uh, Everything is suspended on the reaction of the United States, even in Europe. So we are waiting for Mr. Clinton. Foreign policy was not one of the hottest issues of the campaign. And when it was used, it was often by George Bush to attack Bill Clinton's lack of experience. But that does not seem to have set off any alarms overseas. The Russian President Boris Yeltsin issued a statement saying he hoped Clinton would continue to actively support Russian reforms and create a base for the market economy. The Moscow bookmakers were paying out 125 rubles for every 100 bet on Clinton. In Japan, Prime Minister Kichi Miyazawa stopped in the middle of a parliament session to congratulate Bill Clinton and pledged to work with him to improve relations. In Jerusalem, there were plenty of smiles. Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin sent warm congratulations to the president-elect. Palestinians who are engaged in peace talks with Israel will be anxious to see if Clinton uses the same tough stance towards Israel as the Bush administration. But in Iraq, the celebrations were not so much for the victory of Bill Clinton, but the defeat of George Bush. And now, two years after the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait, Bush, Margaret Thatcher, and Mikhail Gorbachev have all been pushed aside in their countries. But in Iraq, Saddam Hussein is still very much in charge. Rick Salinger, CNN, London. The Clinton-Gore team could face a trade war between the U.S. and the European community. Today in Geneva, a U.S. diplomat asked that GATT ratify up to $1 billion in U.S. tariffs on EC food imports, but the EC blocked ratification for now. GATT, short for General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, has conducted six years of talks aimed at liberalizing global trade barriers. Well, how is that and Bill Clinton's victory playing on Wall Street and markets around the world? Here's Lou Dobbs with a brief analysis. Lou? Frank, thank you. Wall Street today in no mood to celebrate President-elect Clinton's victory. Lower bond prices and worries of Clinton's growth plans pulling the Dow Jones Industrials down. The Dow Jones Industrial Average finished 29.44 lower. The Dow closing at 32.23.04. Trading at the New York Stock Exchange heavy today, 194 million shares traded. The broader markets ended lower, but the secondary markets finished mixed on the day. President-elect Clinton appealed to business and markets today. He pledged to restore the country's economic strength and promised to pursue stability as well as growth. But one market watcher says that stability may be difficult to achieve. The most important factors of which way stocks, bonds, or commodities, or anything else that you invest in move are inflationary expectations and interest rates. And looking into 1993, the market has more to fear of rising inflation and rising interest rates uh, with a totally democratic government in this country than it had previously. And that's not good for bonds, and it's not good for stocks either. The Treasury's 30-year bond dropped in price down 5.30 seconds, pushing the yield up to 7.67%. Another mixed set of reports on the economy. The Federal Reserve Board's economic survey showing most areas are improving, but slowly. 
with the exception of a continuing strong slowdown in California. The so-called Beige Book blames defense cutbacks for most of California's problems, and there was today some good news. Orders to U.S. factories up 1.1% in September, that the first improvement in three months. Excluding defense orders, factory orders actually rose 1.8%. However, August orders dropped at a steeper rate than had been originally reported. While all three of the country's car makers enjoyed higher sales in October, combined sales of cars and light trucks jumped 22% at Ford, combined sales at Chrysler up more than 11% on the back of minivan sales principally, and sales at General Motors up 7.5% for the month on strong truck sales at GM. And that's the very latest in business news. A reminder to join us at the top of the hour for Moneyline. My guest tonight, leaders of three companies that may well benefit from a Clinton administration. Chief Executive Officers Donald Marin of Payne Weber, John Scully of Apple, and Les McGraw of Floor Corporation. That's on Moneyline at 7 Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific tonight. Please join us. Now back to the world today and Frank Sesno. Frank? Thanks, Lou. Well, health care is clearly among the major challenges facing the new president. What reforms does Bill Clinton have in mind, and how will he achieve his goals? A look ahead at health care and the Clinton administration when the world today continues. Delicious. I'm surprised. I love this cereal. These people are eating a high-fiber cereal, and they love the taste. Surprised? I'm not, because they're eating fruit and fiber. And as a nutritionist, I know fruit and fiber has high-fiber bran flakes, and it's the only one with plump raisins, chewy dates, walnuts, and crunchy oat clusters for a delicious taste. Surprisingly delicious. Post fruit and fiber cereal. Try it for the fiber. Love it for the taste. You know, all families catch colds, even doctors' families, like the O'Connors. For Mrs. O'Connor's cold, her husband recommends Dimetap. It's the brand recommended by doctors over 200 million times. Now there's something new, Dimetap liquid gels. Four-hour liquid gels are concentrated medicine that relieves congestion, sneezing, sniffling, really fast. It's easy to trust Dimetap. Doctors trust Dimetap for their families. Shouldn't you trust it for yours? You look like an angel, walk like an angel, talk like an angel, but I got wise. You're the devil in the sky, you know what you are. Just when you thought you knew everything about Volvo. Devil in the sky, you know what you are. Yes, you are. The devil in the sky. Richard Testa on dirt. I drive the big cat, so I know about moving dirt. Richard Testa on Hoover. But for removing dirt, nothing beats my self-propelled Hoover Power Max cleaner with power surge. Nobody gets the dirt like Hoover. If only it came in yellow. It feels as refreshing as it looks. Shower massage from Teledyne Waterpick. A warning for overweight teenage boys. According to researchers, as adults, they face a higher risk of serious disease. In a study of hundreds of Massachusetts residents, men who are overweight youngsters face twice the risk of death by age 70 compared to their thin, youthful contemporaries. That higher risk remains even for men who slim down as they grow older. The same does not hold true, apparently, for women. They face greater health problems, but no apparent higher death risk if they were overweight as teenagers. Speaking up for health, a cure for the nation's ailing health care system may also solve some of the nation's economic ills. At least that is what some Clinton advisors are saying today. CNN's Andrew Holtz examines Bill Clinton's proposal to turn America's health care system around. Clinton promises every American will get health insurance. He plans to establish a minimum benefits package. Eventually, all employers are to be required to offer health coverage. Insurance companies are to accept all customers and charge the same premiums regardless of health. Clinton promises subsidies to those who need them. He says the money will come from the containment of medical inflation. He wants a national cap on health care spending. Other savings are to come from streamlined paperwork, malpractice reform, and more managed care, such as HMOs. As these things are enforced and work, 
you're saving billions and billions, tens, tens of billions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars after a few years. As that money is saved, then you bring in more people to cover. Analysts doubt cost containment alone can save enough to insure everyone. There's more to the nation's health than insurance and cost issues. What we really pay for in this country is not health. We pay for very expensive dimes. Clinton's advisors seem likely to speed trends toward emphasizing prevention over high-tech treatments. We'll spend $250,000 or more on a very low birth weight, tiny baby in a, a nursery. And then we won't spend $10 for transportation for a mother to get an immunization shot so her baby gets measles and they end up in the hospital costing $10,000. Clinton says he'll spend more on AIDS research and treatment, and he promises aggressive All AIDS education. Children in our schools at the earliest practical time should be told in blunt, clear, but sensitive terms how people get AIDS and how to avoid it. Clinton hopes to convince Americans to take more responsibility for their own health, rather than merely relying on doctors to cure them when they get sick. Andrew Holtz, CNN Medical News. Well, what could be bigger in Arkansas than a Razorback victory over Texas? When Prime News returns, Bill Clinton's childhood friends give us a few hints, and we'll give you the answer that's just ahead. Ooh, darling, I need you so. Never, ever gonna let you go. Cause I'm the one. One for you hey, hey, I'm the one Capture the ones you love one for Without you. missing out on the fun yourself Baby, With a Sony Handycam America's most popular camcorder Choosing between the Lexus ES300 And the Acura Vigor GS Is a lot like playing musical chairs Because while both cars have anti-lock brakes And front and rear crumple zones only the Acura Vigor GS comes standard with airbags on both the driver's and passenger side. And even a dummy knows what that means. in America sells more office supplies for less than Office Depot. Nobody. Friends from Arkansas who grew up with Bill Clinton say they always expected big things from him. Now that he's won the highest office in the land, they're bursting with pride, most of them anyway. CNN's Dan Blackburn talked to some of them today. When the people of Little Rock awoke, there was a new sign on the way into town and a similar greeting from his neighbors outside the governor's mansion. Arkansas boy makes good. I mean, this is, a, this is much bigger than a Razorback football win over Texas. And, um, yeah, people are real proud of him. Bill Clinton's victory was not only the end of his own long campaign, but the confirmation of the faith of many of his longtime friends. Danny Thomason, a Little Rock optometrist, okay. says okay. his belief spanned more All than right. two decades. We used to sit out and have coffee at the Aloha Lodge, and he would say, Danny, we've got to make this world a better place. You know, we've got to help people. And uh, I, I knew he was going to be president. So one day, about 24 years ago, I drove to Hampton in South Arkansas, where I'm from. And I told my parents, I have a friend who is going to be president of the United States. And uh, I've never stopped believing that, and now it's come true. President-elect Clinton paid a visit to a group of old friends at the home of Carolyn Staley, who in high school actually defeated him in an election. It came down to a runoff for class secretary, senior class secretary between Bill and myself. We went out in the hallway so they could vote, and Bill looked at me and said, so help me, if you beat me for this, I will never forget it. Classmate David Leopolis used to play touch football with Clinton in high school days. We used to play in a... In a uh, in a, next to a graveyard in high school. I don't know the symbolism for that, but uh, 
um, it was just a way of being together, you know, and, and uh, um, we're going to do it again. I'm excited. I, that, that's what I'm most excited about is our touch football game at the White House lawn. Most of his friends don't expect Clinton to change much. I think his presidency is going to be marked by a, um, an openness, um, a desire to be out with the people. Um, I think if he could take the White House and make it a mobile home and take a bus tour, I think he would. <laughs> For now, though, his friends and supporters in Arkansas, so often referred to during the campaign as just a small state, are simply proud. Dan Blackburn, CNN, Little Rock. And if there were any doubt in Arkansas or anywhere else that things have changed for Bill Clinton, consider this. Bill Clinton will soon be joining the world's famous leaders in one of the world's most famous museums. Sculptors at Madame Tussaud's Wax Museum are carving out the features of the president-elect. They've been working on the head for some time now, and when ele election results came in, they began working on the full wax figure of Bill Clinton. The model will go on display in the London Museum on January 20th, the day Clinton is to be sworn in. Well, what helped Bill Clinton become the next president of the United States? When the world today continues, we'll talk with a humorist, a syndicated columnist, and the head of MTV about Campaign 92. We'll look at the impact of young voters on the election. Also, President Bush returns to the White House. We'll tell you what he had to say to supporters. And after the campaign, will Americans suffer withdrawal now that it's all over? You're married, two kids, one on the way, a house, a dog, five on the way, loads of other responsibilities too numerous to count. And you want this, doesn't make sense. But here is an interesting alternative that does. The new Volvo 850 GLT. consumer has to take responsibility find out more about what you're buying make sure that what they are advertising is the truth sit down and do a little research yourself doing apples to apples the days you call the times you call let's compare the phone bill you tell me how much you paid then i'll call you back and we'll talk the same length of time and i'll tell you how much i paid do the research yourself and then make your own decision i made a conscious decision to switch over to mci they're at the top for value and nothing can compare to that the World Today continues, followed by Moneyline, after this local commercial break, next on CNN. Someday, not far away, your dream will become a reality when you call Don Wyckoff Heating, Clark Peterson Company.